Tyler here, and we be gaming hard, bitch, I swear to God. And today we're down in the uh, demon runes. And I'm going to show you quite a bit in this video. First, I'm going to show you guys the Ceaseless Discharge boss fight. Then I'm going to show you guys where to locate the Chaos Flame member. And then I'm going to show you guys the Fire Sage Demon boss fight. And uh, get you guys basically prepared to move on from the Demon Ruins on into Lost Isolith and uh, take on the Bed of Chaos and all that stuff. I decided that I probably am not going to do a video on the Bed of Chaos. Not really much point to it. Uh, there's just... It's, it's more like a puzzle than a real boss fight. So I really didn't think it was necessary because there's not any real technique or strategy uh, involved. It's just, you know, you run up the right side and take out one side with melee and then you do the other side, you know, with arrows and and then you run up the middle and you're probably going to die once or twice doing that. But uh, she doesn't recharge, so it's no big deal. But uh, anyway... We are going to take out Ceaseless Discharge the easy way. There's pretty much three ways you can take on this boss. And one is the way I'm about to show you. The other is to get into that uh, area that I just looked at on the right. It's kind of a safe zone. And he will slam his tentacle down and you can kind of hack at it. And the other way is to fight him in the open. Now, when you very first come in here, he is not going to be hostile. He's not going to fuck with you. Um, he's just kind of zoned out on the corpse of his dead sister. And he doesn't really get angry and attack with attack you until you go over and start fucking with her corpse and you get the gold hemmed armor set which is obviously an awesome armor set light armor i don't know if there's a better light armor in the game it's definitely my favorite um and i've worn it throughout the majority of, of my two playthroughs so as soon as we uh steal his sister's corpse's clothes he gets pissed off and, uh, you know, I guess rightfully so, but, you know, we don't care. Uh, so what you want to do as soon as you grab up that gold hem black armor set from that altar that he has her on, you are going to want to just take off, run back through that little safe zone. So you're running, you make a left, you'll go through that little safe zone, that'll be a forced right. Uh, you'll come around the corner, make another left, and head straight back for the fog door. Now you get back over here to the fog door, and he is going to follow you. And uh, this is supposed to be sort of like a scripted moment, I believe. I've read some stuff online that this is supposed to be like uh, the Lord of the Rings. Like, you shall not pass, you know, like uh, the, the Balrog or whatever falls off the the bridge or whatever so this this was is not a glitch this was supposed to be it in the game so this is how you're gonna clear all the lava out of your way and and make it easier for you to traverse the demon ruins and really, that's it's pretty simple. It's pretty simple to beat him in the safe zone, too. Um, where he slams his tentacle down. Uh, either way, is pretty safe. The only way that's going to be a tough boss fight is if you fight him out in the open. But I don't think that they really intended for this to be a tough boss fight. That's that's why I only got 40,000 souls on New Game Plus or, or 20,000 souls on your first playthrough. Um, if it's a real tough boss, it seems like they, they give you souls as as a reward for that when, when you beat a real tough boss. So I, I don't really think that they 
uh, intended for um, a lot of people to just go and, and fight him out in the open. E even though that is an option, I think that they assumed most people would take one of the easier routes. And, and why wouldn't you? I, I, I go with the easiest route just because it's quicker. I'm just ready to, uh... <clears throat> I'm sorry. Move on, you know? So now, the next thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna go and we're gonna get the Chaos Flame Ember. And this is going to allow you guys to modify your plus five fire weapons into Chaos Weapons. And Chaos Weapons actually scale with humanity. And it's just the soft humanity on, on your humanity meter. Um, it's not going to be like, you don't have to be human. And that's not going to make a difference. If you've got five in your soft humanity, in your humanity meter, you are going to do more damage than if you had four humanity on your humanity meter and were only, and were human. So, you, you can be hollow with five humanity in, in your humanity meter, and you are going to do more damage than if you have four and are human. So anyway, what we're doing here is, this is the Chaos Flame Ember, and it is back down here around in this lava, and you've got a bunch of big, giant demons... Um, kind of guarding the the way before it and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw them out one by one with our black bow of Ferris and uh, I mentioned it in the last video guys but I really can't stress the importance of getting yourself a bow and getting it upgraded and really I would suggest get the black bow of Ferris Take it up the standard upgrade path, you know, uh, I guess if you don't, you know, use a lot or, uh, really upgrade your dexterity if you're a strength build or something, it might make less sense, and obviously it's not as crucial for a magic user since you have a lot of ranged attacks anyway. But uh, if you're going with a dex build or a quality build, I mean, there's just no reason that you shouldn't have a bow, uh, a good strong bow in your inventory, because it is just insanely useful, as you're going to see in this video. Uh, I'm going to use my bow a lot, and look, I, I've got it up to plus 15 now, and it's doing a reasonable amount of damage. I mean, look, 227. You know, I just basically got tired of switching over to the scythe, so I just went ahead and killed him with the bow. And um, it, it's really going to be very useful throughout this whole little portion of the game down in the Demon Ruins and Lost Isolith. Uh, in Lost Isolith, you're also going to be able to use the bow to... Uh, hit those half-breed dragons and get them slamming into each other or it doesn't actually always work out that way but there's tons of spots that you can get there in Lost Isolith up high or um, as you come into Lost Isolith you can kind of stay within that um, alcove-like area and shoot at the dragons from there and they can't get all the way in there uh, it's just insanely useful, the bow, man, and I can't stress it enough. You know, get yourself a bow, get it upgraded, because you're gonna be surprised how many fucking uses you find for it. And sometimes when you've got a fully upgraded bow, you can just straight use it in combat. You know, it's totally, uh... A viable option. So we're just, uh, you know, drawing these guys over here one by one. 
putting a motherfucking bow in their face. And you know, they're getting all revved up, but you got uh, plenty of room here to jump around, dodge. No big deal. You got all the room in the world to fight these guys. And uh, they really won't pose much of a threat to you one at a time. Now, if you were to rush up over there and start trying to melee them and have them all jumping around at once, I think there's six of them, you, you would almost be guaranteed to have a hard time. I can't say for sure because I've never done it. <laughs> I've, I've always done it this way, uh, draw, drawn them out. Um, but uh, my prediction is you would not have a good time rushing up over there. So we've got him taken out. We've just got one more of these guys. He drops the demon's great axe. I'm not sure if that is required for the rare weapons trophy. But uh, you're going to kill these guys. And uh, I mean, as you can see, I don't have the covetous gold serpent ring on or anything. You, you'll likely get that in a drop without you know with uh, or throughout your your two playthroughs you, you'll get one of these demons to to drop that item at some point so there shouldn't be any reason to have to farm for it or, or anything like that okay so we got the last one knocked out and we are running up over here to get the flame ember the chaos flame ember and where the Chaos Flame Ember is, is right out there, in the middle of the lava. And I didn't realize it, but whenever you start New Game Plus, they actually take away the orange charred ring, much like they do with the Covenant of Artorius ring that allows you to traverse the bit the abyss they take away the orange charred ring which reduces lava damage but really what it should say is allows you to cross over lava and if you don't know where to get the orange charred ring you have to get it by chopping off the tail of the centipede demon and the centipede demon is actually going to be the next video that goes up right after this and I actually have to kill the centipede demon on this playthrough because my shortcut is not open I read somewhere that if you join the chaos servant covenant and ranked up by offering 30 humanity and open the shortcut in your first playthrough that it would stay open on new game plus and uh, that's not true I got there um, last night, and that short cut is closed up like a bitch. So, Solaire is doomed. Really, he's already doomed because I already killed him. But, it wasn't on purpose. It wasn't on purpose. <laughs> it wasn't my fault, I should say. I summoned him for Smell and Orstein, and he didn't show up to the boss battle. I don't know, he got jammed up by some enemies along the way or something, and I got killed in the boss battle. And then I respawned at the bonfire, and he was hostile. He was attacking me right off the jump, so I, I really don't know what happened there. So anyway, we're making our way down to the Fire Sage Demon now. And uh, along the way... We are running into some Capra demons who were earlier, they were the boss of the lower undead burg, and now they're just a regular fucking enemy. Um, they seem slightly smaller than the 
ones in the undead berg or the one in the undead berg. But maybe it's just the environment. I don't know. So anyway, um, here comes Dark Knight Kirk. We have been invaded. If you guys don't know, uh, Dark Knight Kirk is an NPC who will invade you at different points of your game. The first one's going to be the depths. The second one is going to be right here. Um, and, act and actually, to be more specific, it's by the cursed frogs in the depths. You know, become human, go down in that area with the cursed frogs and the basilisks, and he's, or, or the basilisks, you know, whatever you want to call them, and he is going to invade your game. Kill him there, then come out here to the demon ruins, human, also. He will invade you here, right around the time you're around in this corner, to come around here and take on these four capper demons. And sorry guys, I got interrupted there for a second. Um, anyhow, um, so he's gonna invade you when you're coming around the corner to deal with these capper demons here in the demon runs, and then he is also going to invade you. Uh, in Lost Island, right by the Bed of Chaos boss door. And if you kill him in all three locations, which you're going to need to be human to do, whenever you go back to the room with the Daughter of Chaos and uh, Inji, the egg burdened guy, there is going to be a corpse that has his armor set on it. Spiked armor. And it looks pretty cool. But it's not great. It's, it's not the best armor set. However, what I actually kind of found later on is the gear that I'm wearing right now. I've actually swapped out his spiked um chest armor that has the spikes on the shoulders and it's uh i didn't take too big of a hit to my magic uh, flame lightning um defense and i actually gained a lot of physical defense by putting that on and uh i slap on hovel's ring and i've still got a quick roll and it's just it looks awesome <laughs> So anyway, here we go. We've got a guy who's just invaded us, and he sees us here fighting this Capra Demon, and he runs up, and I think, I believe that's homing soul mass he has, and he slams us with it right there before we get a chance to do anything. And then, in case we were confused about what asshole he is, he does a shrug. <laughs> so, I edited out the trip back. And we are right here where we were fighting that Capra Demon at. And, oh man, that, that pissed me off so much when that happened. It's just such an asshole move. You know, uh, it just zero honor. Like, he's got honor in the negative. And, uh, it, God, it made me so mad um, at the time. It's funny in hindsight, but God, just what a what a prick, man! I mean, you don't have to come in, in my opinion, and bow to someone and wait for them to bow back. I mean, you don't have to get that honorable with it, but um, you know, come in, man, and you know, at, at least make sure the person that you're invading acknowledges that you're there. I mean, I do. Really, I, I'm Blade of the Dark Moon Covenant now, so I only invade guilty motherfuckers that deserve it anyway. <laughs> really, I don't care. Really, I don't care, man. You can invade me and, and kill me while I'm fighting other monsters and act like you're a badass. All you want to. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me, really. It made me mad at the time, but I've gotten over it. 
Anyhow, you just uh, saw me take out that big worm once again with the motherfucking black bow. And uh, just its usefulness knows no bounds. That was a perfect place to use it because you don't want to get up on those motherfucking worm creatures that are popping out of the ground. They spit acid and they will break your weapons like that. And it sucks. And actually, on my way to the Bed of Chaos boss fight last night, I had one of the Chaos Eaters spray acid on me and break my crystal shield. Which sucks. Um, so I'm actually back to using the plus five Dragon Crest shield again. There's another worm spitting acid, and uh, we're just not gonna fuck with him right now. Go ahead and take these guys out. That that worm does respawn anyway, so it's not like if you kill him, he's gonna be gone forever. Anyway, we are here at the Fire Sage Demon. He has the same weaknesses as the Stray Demon, so once again, we're gonna equip our Life Hunt Scythe, just like in the first video I uploaded. And we are going to go in here. Now, I'm going to eat some blood red moss clump before I come in here. Uh, I know that it reduces bleeding buildup, but I don't know if it actually reduces the speed in which your bleed meter builds. I think that it just pretty much can reduce the buildup once it's already started to build. Um, but I might be wrong on that. I, I'm not exactly sure, but anyway... It's best when you have the life hunt site and you're using it to keep the blood red moss clump uh, equipped anyway uh, to your kind of quick use items. That way, if it gets really close to you actually having blood loss, you can just pop that uh, blood red moss clump and, and get rid of it and save that bleed for your fucking enemies. So, here we go. It's the same strategy as the Stray Demon, man. He's got basically the exact same moveset. He does a fire blast attack. He flies in the air and slams down on his ass. He fucking swings his big ass weapon either in a slashing motion or straight flat down. Um, if you get hit by a direct shot with the weapon, it's going to do a lot of damage. Um, but, you know, try to stay behind him. But if you have a weapon that does bleed damage, you are going to take out big chunks of his life every hit. So it should go pretty quickly. That's going to be the end of the video today, guys. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, subscribe as Always have a great one. Keep on gaming hard.